Well, the train keeps rolling. Kling have released Kling 2.6, and although it's a 0.1 update, it is a pretty big one because now we've got audio. So, of course, let's hear it from Flamethrower Girl. It's hot today, but you know what else is hot? Generating videos with native audio. Sounds pretty good, right? Today, we're gonna dive into Kling 2.6 to see where it's shining and, well, I mean, where it can use some extra polish. Plus, Bike Dance have released See Dream 4.5, not Dance. Dance is the video one, Dream is the image one. So, we have another contender in the Banana Thunderdome. All that and a really insane nano banana prompt that, uh, well, if you're into AI filmmaking, you are definitely going to want to check this out. So it's been a big week for Kling, obviously kicking off with the release of their O1 model, which I covered in the last video. I am still finding this one endlessly fascinating. But on the heels of O1, Kling had the surprise drop of their 2.6 model, which now does sound natively. Let's take a quick look and listen with a Doom Detective scene that I put together. I need to hire you for a case. I'm not taking the job. Feels like blood money. I'll pay you two million dollars. I'll take the case. I should have known I'd never live to collect that money. On the plus side, at least our guy does not have to worry about those unpaid bills stacking up anymore. So a couple of quick notes on this. For one, this is not a one shot. This was multiple clips that I ended up editing together. Additionally, we do run into the issue of voices changing from generation to generation. Uh, for example, here's an alternate. I'm not taking the case. Feels like blood money. I should mention, I have spoken to Kling about this. Uh, they are aware that this is a feature that we all desperately want. And well, I mean, what can I say? They're working towards it. Currently, 2.6 is generating, well, the fairly standard five and 10 second outputs at 1920 by 1080. It does, of course, handle text to video and image to video. Although to note, we don't have first frame, last frame with 2.6 currently, at least. And currently it is only generating dialogue in English and Chinese. We're actually gonna dig into that in a little bit, but for now, let's go check out a text prompt. Uh, one, of the, one of our standards, uh, our Twin Peaks inspired FBI agent in a diner. It is a damn fine cup of Joe, but how's the pie? The pie is amazing. It's an old recipe from the log lady. Overall, pretty solid for text to video. We got all of the dialogue that I asked for. Our FBI agent guy gave an enthusiastic Dale Cooper worthy performance. Uh, and I actually got to give Kling credit on this one. Our guy is not double fisting coffee as we've seen in so many other recent outputs with this prompt. I mean, I don't have a problem with it, but apparently everybody else is like, that's too much caffeine. Taking the same prompt out for a spin in image to video utilizing this image, uh, we ended up with this. It is a damn fine cup of Joe, but how's the pie? The pie is amazing. It's an old recipe from the log lady. Now I do have to note there's a little bit of stiffness to my ears at least in this performance, kind of a, a natural timing and phrasing to the dialogue. Although I do have to say in this case, uh, it actually kind of works because it sort of gives it more of a Lynchian vibe. I do have to note that you will occasionally end up with some like dialogue scrambling such as this. It is a damn fine cup of Joe. But how's the pie? The pie is amazing. It's an old recipe from the log lady. Man, Julie back there sounds pretty unenthusiastic about that pie. So, you know, dialogue scrambling, yes, it's going to happen, but I have noticed that it's not quite as prevalent as say in VO3. Now, while I'll say some of the dialogue can come off a bit on the stiff and stilted side, 2.6 can do rapid fire stuff. Uh, for example, take this pirate flow. I'm the aquatic, erratic, black, dramatic, climatic, hole breaker, swing and cut last faster than a hurricane maker. Watch the ship navigation lock on a location, put devastation without any negotiation. I'm abro, I'm tactical, the speed is impracticable. The way I'm navigating is strictly not a- Calling it now, pirate core is the hip hop subgenre blowing up next year. Uh, giving credit where it's due, uh, this was actually a modified prompt from Plasmo. So uh, here was his original. I'm the kinetic, energetic, phonetic, genetic, code breaker, moving pixels faster than a digital salt shaker. Watch the lip synchronization lock in the station. PSL without any hesitation. I'm verbal. I'm visual. The speed is residual. The way I'm articulating is strictly digital. Overall, that is pretty impressive. I'm actually kind of bummed that we only get 10 seconds out of that. Uh, and, you know, look, the model can get wacky just as all AI video does. Uh, that said, that wackiness can often be pretty hilarious uh, as this output from Alex G new media showcases. Come on, baby, please talk to me. 
I have pizza! Let's talk! I can tell you one thing. I know that let's talk. That really means let's argue. Now, in terms of the actual video model, uh, I am pretty sure that 2.6 is just 2.5 with audio. I mean, it is just a 0.1 update, so I'd expect as much. Furthering that speculation and in kind of a nice surprise, if you go back into your library, uh, your old 2.5 outputs now have audio. Uh, this was generated three months ago. Oh, interestingly, some of your 2.1 generations will also now have audio. Now, admittedly, some of those earlier outputs are going to have some fairly wonky audio, but uh, then again, you didn't prompt for any audio, but I do think it goes to showcase one of 2.6's strengths in audio, and that's working as, you know, essentially sound effects, uh, as showcased here by Stevie Mac. <laughs> Rounding out, since we do have two supported languages in Kling 2.6, I was curious if dialogue might sound more natural in Chinese, Kling obviously being a Chinese company. So uh, testing that out with a War Kai Wong meets John Woo inspired prompt. So while I don't speak Chinese, I mean, everything sounded right to me, but what do I know? Uh, for the folks that do, if you could let us know in the comments if that sounded you know, natural and accurate. In the meantime, here's that same clip in English. What movie do you think we're in? With these guns, definitely an action movie. Pity, I dressed for a romance. Maybe next time. So overall, a pretty solid update for Kling. I'm not necessarily over the moon about the you know character voices, currently, but uh, again, it's just launched. I'm sure that there will be updates. But in the meantime, we still do have the O1 model to experiment with, and that is just endlessly fascinating to me. Okay, let's go check in with ByteDance to see what they have in store for the Banana Battle Dome with Sea Dream 4.5. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor, Hostinger. So it's a safe bet that if you're watching this channel, you are creating or building something with AI. And whatever that is, it probably needs a home somewhere on the web. Also, I'm sure that you know that building a website used to be a huge headache. You had to worry about coding, hosting, finding a domain. I mean, it was a lot. But thankfully, that is completely changing with AI. And that brings us to the partner of today's video, Hostinger. Hostinger AI is basically your all-in-one solution for building, launching, and growing your online presence. With everything from website building, hosting, domain names, and email all in one place. And what I like about it is that it gives you options on how you want to build. If you like having a bit of control, but you still want speed, their AI website builder is Pretty incredible. You just answer a few simple questions about what you need and it generates a unique site for you in minutes. It even comes with everything preloaded, stock images, content, the works. And because it's drag and drop, you can customize it exactly how you want without touching a single line of code. But since you watch this channel, I mean, I know you're leaning into the AI tools and that's why you have to try hosting or horizons. This is their new chat interface tool, pretty much vibe coding. You literally just chat with the AI, tell it what you want your site or web app to do. And well, it'll build it right in front of your eyes. For anyone watching who wants to get started, I highly recommend the growth plus AI plan. Uh, it gives you everything I just mentioned, plus all their pro features like e-commerce tools, plus 50 credits to use on the AI tools. And the timing is perfect because they're running a massive Cyber Week deal right now. Plus, you'll get an additional 10% off if you use the code theoretically. At the checkout, just click on have a coupon code and type in theoretically, and that will get you an additional 10% off. Just click the link in the description below to lock in the deal and build something awesome with Hostinger AI today. Big thanks to Hostinger for sponsoring today's video. Moving on, ByteDance have released C Dream 4.5, uh, image generation, image editing, multi-image editing, text rendering, world understanding. I mean, you guys know the drill at this point. 
The key improvements that ByteDance is touting is, you know, better fidelity and aesthetics, sharper micro details, refined facial features, cinematic color grading, uh, 3D depth, and high resolution up to 4K. Additionally, ByteDance is highlighting better text rendering, cleaner, more readable text, uh, better prompt coherence, and editing precision. Uh, additionally, this one takes up to 10 reference images with better consistency. And I figured this would be a good time to check in with our man in the blue business suit, considering that the last place we saw him, he got zapped away somewhere at Area 51. Well, it looks like our man in a blue business suit has been teleported back in time and is up to his old tricks of walking down busy city streets. Uh, I thought this would be an interesting test. This is just Sea Dream 4.5 as a straight image generator, uh, giving it the prompt a man in a blue business suit walking down a busy city street in 1972. Uh, sea Dream was nice enough to put a calendar here to let us know it's 1972. So now moving into the editing side of things, I had Sea Dream take that image and bump up the calendar a decade to 1982. Um, and I mean, there's, there's a lot to like in here. I mean, that suit, that suit is a lot. But impressively, it did not only update the calendar, uh, but again, our background characters now are dressed, uh, yeah, I would call that fairly era appropriate. Uh, the cars have also all been updated as well. So, uh, well, let's let's take it up another decade. Moving the clock up to 1992, our man now wearing a, uh, you know, pretty era appropriate baggy blue suit. Uh, my man there on the left, 100% off the rack Old Navy. Um, that white uh, Honda Accord, I mean, yeah, that's pretty early 90s. Um, yeah, overall, I mean, everything about this screams 1992. Heading into 2002, our guy now wearing much more of a slim fitting suit. Uh, cars all look appropriate to, you know, around 2002. Nothing about this is really jumping out at me, um, saying anything but 2002. Jumping ahead another decade to 2012, I do think that this goes to show that not much changed in like men's suit fashion in those 10 years. Um, that said, you know, again, our cars have now updated. We've got this like Mercedes over here with the personalized plate 2012. But I think the dead giveaway here is actually this woman wearing skinny jeans. Hopping up to 2022 or as close to modern day as we're gonna get. Um, this one was pretty fascinating actually. All of the cars have changed. Like we've got this SUV over here. They all kind of have like this like vaguely EV kind of look to it. Um, the thing that really bummed me out is that this storefront, which has been with us since the beginning, is now like kind of a corporate like gray box. Um, yeah, it really kind of bummed me out. And finally, just out of curiosity, we of course had to jump up to 2032. Uh, I mean, you know, not really anything to write home about here. This is very much your typical AI generated image of the future, kind of that very like neon uh, utopia kind of look to it. So um, yeah. Pretty fascinating. Now, while our man in the blue business suit test was a little on the silly side, I do think it does go to show uh, the world understanding that Sea Dance 4.5 has. Um, for some more kind of aesthetic images, Heather Cooper gives us this rather nice shot of a chef ruining a steak by putting garnish on top of it. Just put it on the side, man. Nobody's interested in that. Heisenberg gives us a nice image of a lady having a cappuccino in Paris. Um, points here again, Sea Dream, not doing the double fisting thing. And Brent Lynch gives us action lady running next to the Sea Dream pace car. Uh, props to Sea Dream for, you know, essentially having the restraint to not make that Scarlett Johansson. Sea Dream 4.5 is now available over on Dreamina, of course, and via API, so it's kind of everywhere. Uh, currently ranked number seven in text to image. Um, yeah, let me know if you guys agree down in the comments. Rounding out a super useful Nana Banana prompt, especially for AI filmmaking. It's hard to say exactly where this came from. I think it might be based off of an idea that Tech Hala had uh, that Underwood actually, you know, moved into full prompt. It's a super long prompt. So I'm actually gonna just uh, link this down below. There's no way that I can fit this into the description. But essentially what this prompt will do is take any one image and then essentially generate a contact sheet of, you know, potential follow-up shots. For example, taking this shot, which we utilized for our heist movie set in hell a few videos ago, the prompt ends up generating this out, which is pretty fascinating. Now, not all of these images, in my opinion, are usable, nor really are they sequential. I do think it's very good at generating up uh, usable shots that you can then extract and utilize for image to video prompts. And the thing that works really well with it is that it, it does very much seem to respect essentially the space of your input image. You can, of course, just grab that contact sheet and bring it into VO and see what will come out. Uh, it's probably not gonna be very great. This could be it. This could be it. Are you certain? 
Instead, I do think a good way to go with it is to generate up, you know, your grid of nine um, and then utilizing Nano Banana once again, you can then have Nano Banana extract one of those images. And then if you're running into any kind of continuity issues, um, you know, even provide it with another reference of one of your characters and, you know, tell it to replace that character with the attached reference. I think this is a very useful technique. It's by no means like one shotting anything. It's just a really good way of generating a lot of options that you can then mine from and build some something with. Again, highly recommend giving this one a shot. I'll have a link to Underwood's prompt down below. Uh, do look through it, tweak it, make it your own. So I guess that's it for today. I mean, I do know that sort of looming in the background right now is Runway's uh, Gen 4.5. So we do have that one to look forward to. Uh, I don't have access to it yet, but when I do, of course, I will, I will take it through the full battery of tests. As always, I thank you for watching. My name is Tim.